Hello, I'm Landis, and we're back. For two reasons. Firstly, I ran out of time, and this is the quickest video for me to record and edit. And secondly, really want to know if there's some game here. Let's crack on and see if we can find it. The first morning of waking up on the island. I'm so excited to discover what the day will bring. Should I jump straight into lab research? Or maybe it would be wise to start investigating a way to help these cats and find a cure for myself. Perhaps a good starting point would be to get to know the cats a little better and on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay. Ah, what should I do today? Rest, romance, research, recon. Hmm. It looks like I can do like three, maybe four a day. And there's like a limit. Hmm. Let's try research. Hmm, 18 research to do. Research five. Time to round up some kitties. Slow day today. I've only got to organize a few samples. I'm off on a field trip of sorts with the professor. Hmm. Let's catalog samples. Today, I'm in the lab doing flora research. It's not the most exciting job, but if I keep my head down, I can get through it quickly enough. It really just consists of unpacking the new samples of plants and flowers that the professor and I have collected on our foraging expeditions, and logging them into the database of organic substances on the computer. Most of them are commonplace plants that grow abundantly in the forest, but occasionally we come across something more rare, exotic even. One of the samples I'm looking at today is the Caladula incana maritima, which is very interesting indeed. I can't help speculating that it's been cultivated in the marigolds, little greenhouse, and then transplanted to the open ground. I'm distracted momentarily by the sound of a clinking glass when I turn to see the beautiful manicured paw of a sphinx cat tapping on a beaker, nudging it perilously close to the edge of the counter. Little bar, Stuart. Boots, stop that. You're not supposed to be in here. She laughs as though I told a joke. That's frightfully pretty flower. Calanduna incana maritima, if I'm not mistaken. You never cease to amaze me, Boots. How on earth did you know that? Why I make it my business to know all about rare and valuable works of art? Art? Why not? It's been created, like a sculpture or painting. Marigolds are true artists in the garden. Ah, I wondered if they had something to do with this. It's so unusual, even in its natural swampy habitat, but to have it growing here in the forest is very out of the ordinary. Yes, its properties are extraordinary too. Human. Well, I'm quite new to botanical science, so I probably don't know half of it. Why don't you fill me in? Although I'm always happy to facilitate your learning, human... I simply can't stay here a moment longer. The air is so stale. Don't you find? I ignore a sideways glance and upturned nose. Let's go to the beach and drink some coconut water, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Snooze. I'm not going anywhere until I finish this. Don't be ridiculous. You can tinker about in here any time, but the sun will be gone in an hour or two. I'm not tinkering. This is my job. If I don't get it done, the professor will want to know why. Then explain to him you had better things to do. Snooty booty. Won't tell you again. If he catches you here, the pauper will cage you. Be careful with that flower. Human, it doesn't do to inhale that fragrance too deeply. What? What? I turn to ask why and see her flounce out, knocking the beak over the swish of her tail as she does. You did that on purpose! She's gone, leaving me to clear up the broken glass. Okay. Ah, so we are getting close. I saw I could go back. 
Oh, so there is a limit on research. Okay. So is it? Rest brings that all back up. Okay. Let's do some recon. Oh, so this is limited as well. Security guard met when I arrived might be a good lead. Strange message in the middle of the night. Hmm. Let's do recon. Well, they're all recon. <laughs> Let's do four. I've been staring at the back of his head for a long time now. Too long. I'm starting to feel creepy. I just don't understand it. All he does is sit in that chair by the dock, eating egg sandwiches and doing crossword puzzles. How does a man like that become the security guard for a place like this? As far as I can tell, his job consists of greeting the boat to make sure nothing unauthorised gets on or off of it, picking up supply deliveries and occasionally taking a long lazy lap of the island to make sure everything's secure. I wonder what he knows about the research that goes on here. If anything, he doesn't seem to be interested. Regardless, I decide it's time to get to know this island bouncer and go to join him on the dock. I sit next to Zane, me on the sand, him in that chair. He's not wearing his big coat and the short sleeve shirt allows me to notice for the first time how surprisingly muscular he is. I never truly thought of him as security in the bodyguard sense, but now squinting at him sideways, trying not to stare too obviously, I begin to see him in a new light. I pluck up the courage to talk. Hey Zane, how are you? Are you trying to start a conversation? He says this without looking up from his crossword puzzle. Uh, um, I suppose I am, yes. I don't get to chat to humans much in my job. Research assistant 125. He rolls the words out like he's reading them. Oh yes, that's that's me. So, what does the number stand for, anywho? You don't know? He asks, monotonously. I still glued to the crossword puzzle. No, actually, to be honest, Zane, I don't know much at all. There's a definite lack of intel sharing on this project. Which project would that be? Uh, this one? The whole research project that's going on? Is there more than one? Depends who you ask. You? I, I was just asking you, really. I don't understand your job. I don't need to. I don't care about things. I don't need to. What do you care about? Zane looks at me for the first time. You really want to talk, don't you? Well, there's not much else to do here besides. I'm interested in it all, aren't you? My interests consist of what's for dinner, and what's my next puzzle book? When it's coming, you get it delivered. Comes with a mail. He's back to not looking at me again. The mail? I mean, the parcels. And the letters, yeah. The letters? Who would go to the trouble of sending mail all the way out here when we have email? I laugh, but Zane looks very serious. It's safe to send a mail the old-fashioned way, with email that's viruses, hack of worms, and cyber terrorists. I get the feeling he's not very tech savvy. Yeah, but anyone can open and read the letter, right? Not if I'm around. And besides, who would expect that something important would be in a fragrant pink envelope? There's an awkward silence, of course, being my unusually social inept self. I'm desperate to fill it. Need any help with that crossword? I'm pretty good. I can even do the cryptic puzzle in the Daily Inquirer. This line usually gains me little kudos, but Zane simply ignores me. I decide to just come out and say what's on my mind. I mean, you can't make things more awkward than they already are. Zane, if you ever noticed anything strange going on here, the cat's behaving weirdly. Zane suddenly looks up, his eyes looking straight on mine, unwavering and hard. No, have you? Well, not exactly, but... He's looking at me properly for the first time since we met. I've definitely captured his attention, but I'm too nervous to follow through. I'm just being silly. The lack of human company can get to me. Guess... Gives me daft ideas. Such as? He's still staring at me, as though he's trying to read my mind. Sometimes, when I'm out tagging, 
I feel they're playing games on me. Like children. Hide and seek. That kind of thing. Some of those cats may be cleverer than any of us give them credit for. Now it's my turn to be intrigued. In what way? They know when to stay out of the sun. You're gone, Pink. The moment, if there was one, is over. I decide maybe Zane isn't the best person to talk to about my concerns. Feeling unwanted and slightly dejected, I decide to head back to the camp. I stand up and brush the sand off me. What's a five letter word for solitude? I learn. Zane silently scribbles in his book as I leave. Okay, now let's do some romance. Oh, well, we got McMurphy and we got Snooty Booty. Ooh, question mark. Hmm, which one? I mean, Snooty Booty's an easier voice for me to do. But McMurphy just looks happy. Snooty. I'll take the easy way out. I'm splayed out like a starfish on the beach, in my bathing clothes, a swelteringly hot day, and I find it hard to concentrate on my work. So here I am, and let the cool sea wash over my feet and legs as I lay back on the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby, and I sit up to see where it came from. Snooty Booty, in repose, under the shade of a palm tree, is looking about her with a concerned expression. One that I've never really seen a cat make before. I go over to see if I can help her with something. Are you okay, Snooty Booty? She lets out another long, wistful sigh. To be quite frank with you, human, no, I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun, but there's something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It's quite the predicament. All right. Want me to fetch it for you? Oh, would you really be so kind, human? I would be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We can't have you putting that delicate skin of yours at risk, can we? Snooty Booty looks grave. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else, don't you know? One must never expose one's skins to the elements. Human is really is quite aging. One must also never get stressed if one wishes to retain one's youthful aura, which is rather difficult on this frightful island. Oh, I know. Believe me. How do you know? Are you stressed? Oh, no. That would upset me terribly. Really? That's sweet of you. Of course, you really are a precarious thing. I do so hope you are finding your time here pleasant. Don't worry about me, Snooty Booty. I'm fine. Now, what was it you would like me to get for you? Well, before I tell you, I must ask that you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It's very dear to me, you see, and one of the few luxuries I have all to myself. Of course, no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. I do hope so, human. You see, along the beach, just south of here, there is a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It is quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. Snooty Booty looks as if she's lost in a wonderful dream. Um, sounds lovely. It is. I like to drink coconut water as often as I can, as it is so good for the skin and the waistline. But the less civilized denizens of the island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully matured. Fortunately, no one else seems to have discovered this particular tree yet. Well, okay, Snooty Booty. I'll try to find some coconuts for you. I'll be back soon. You have my thanks, human. I've been walking for a lot longer than Snooty Booty led me to believe. I'm not sure if this is even the right tree. They all look the same to me, although this one does seem to have more coconuts than the others. 
I decided to take a chance and bundle up as many as I can carry in my arms and haul them back to her ladyship. By the time I get back to Snooty Booty, I'm faint from the exertion, not to mention walking so far in the sun. I fall to my knees, panting in front of her. There you go, Poot. She eyes the pile with a distinct air of disapproval. I only needed one coconut human. Oh. These are far too many. Well, I do apologize, madam. Tell me, you didn't plunder the tree. No, there were plenty on the ground already. So, oh well. That's a small mercy. At least you didn't hack them down. Hack them down? With what? Well, your hands are rather large and leathery. Snooty booty. I do not use my hands for deforestation. I'm sure you did your very best. Although I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome. I'm sure. I look down at the pile of coconuts and it strikes me properly for the first time how strange it is that there are no creatures on the island to plunder them. What do you think it is, Snoots, that keeps wildlife away from the island? Do you mean the magnetic barrier? Magnetic barrier? Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were meant to be a scientist. I realise she must be referring to the force field that surrounds the island. Now, be a dear and crack one open for me. With my enormous hands. Well, you could try, I suppose. I push down the irritation that is slowly rising in me and smile politely. On second thoughts, I'll be right back with a screwdriver. <laughs> what? Snooty Booty looks horrified. It's a sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need one of those for? So that I can make a hole to get the water out of the coconuts. How else would you propose I do it? Well, look around you, dear. Look at nature's bounties. What about that? Snooty gestures with a limp paw at a shard of rock nearby. Snoots, how do you usually get the water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? Well, the exuberant Kibbles simply loves to break things. Have you not noticed? It's one of the few reasons I tolerate him, don't you know? Yes. Uh, nobody noticed that last time, but I kept calling Kibbles Nibbles, so I feel bad. Far better than one of your screwel drivers, don't you think? Hmm. I reach over and pick up the rock. It does look like it could actually do the job. Okay, let's give it a try. Here he goes. Holding a coconut in a palm leaf, I gently tap the shell a few times with the stone before finally whacking it cracks open surprisingly easy and the water drains into the leaf. There now, see how nature provides, human. Yep, again you're welcome. Quite. Snooty Booty stretches her neck and an upper body towards the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as she can before raising her big eyes to me. I can't quite seem to... I suddenly realise what she's getting at. Hmm, maybe you should get up. Oh, no, let's, let's be nice, we want information. I let her struggle for a moment, or two, before I begin to feel a little bit like a child pulling the wings of a fly. She can't help the way she is. You seem to be struggling a little, Boots. Well, you've placed my libation slightly out of my reach. Oh, I'm sorry, would you like me to help? Bring it a little closer, perhaps. Well, of course I would, human. Are you being deliberately obtuse? I would very much like to help you, Snooze. But you make it rather difficult. How? I don't understand. I've been perfectly clear in my instruction. You see, I'm under a spell. It's a very powerful one which prevents me from following any instruction unless accompanied by some magic words. Oh? Would you care to enlighten me? Well, it'd be something like this. Please, human, do you mind passing me my libation? Thank you very much. There's a pause, during which I'm not really sure what Snooty Booty is thinking. 
Suddenly, the Sphinx erupts into a peals of laughter. I seem to have forgotten my manners. Please, do be so kind, human. I would be most obliged. Oh, go on then. I nudge the leaf closer to her as she delicately laps at it. I truly am indebted. Many thanks. That looks delicious. Mm -mm. Snooty agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. I'm sure it was. She's still lapping at the water. Oh, my throat's a bit scratchy, especially in this heat. Snooty Booty finally comes up for air. Quite. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see. So hydrating and most palatable too. You really ought to try it sometime. I look down at the now dry palm leaf. Yes, that's a good idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking coconut water is to curl up and have a nap, you know. Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? Indeed. Human, I suppose you have other things to do now. Oh, well. Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Okay, so. Prepare the gameplay elements are just picking what we're going to do. 4.2. Now, can I use all of these up? Or if I use the last one, do I get in trouble? What's changed? Ah, you only have one heart remaining. If you choose to continue, it would have negative consequences. Alright, ah, okay. Then we want to rest. That answered that question. I'm in class at my university. The tutor is late, and we're all sitting waiting. I turn to my friend. He sits behind me to make a joke about the tutor's car breaking down. My friend isn't there. Instead, there is a giant cat. What the fuck is that? It looks like an elder. It bears its teeth at me and lets out a menacing low growl. Just as I'm about to scream, the tutor arrives. And it's Professor Pauper. You look like you've seen a ghost, Barry. Trying to answer back, it's telling to look behind me. But the words won't come out. I'm rigid with fear. Can't move, can't speak, can't scream. Everyone else is acting like things are normal. Can't they see it? I force myself to turn again and look at the terrifying cat. But it's not there. There's just an ordinary domestic cat and everyone is laughing at me. Now I see everyone from the island. The Marigolds, Joe, Bob, Zane, Pauper. All pointing and laughing. I jump out of my seat to leave and I'm in bed. In my tent, sat bolt upright. I shouldn't have eaten cheese so close to bedtime. Ooh, new day. New stuff. Oh, oh. Oh, no. So who we choose has effects. Don't like effects as which cat shall I date. We've upset McMurphy. Has the research changed? No. Recon. There's only one more to do. Blocks after receiving a gift from Trixie. Okay. Recon 5. Chapter 4. Okay, so let's do this one. I hear my catalogue beeping. I presume it's the professor. Tumble out of bed half asleep and fumble around looking for the device. I look at the screen, my eyes struggling to focus. The message isn't from the professor at all. There's no contact information. Come outside. Who is this? Come outside. There 
obviously aren't going to respond to my question. Should I do as the message tells me? Probably not, but we're going. Even though curiosity killed the cat. We're not a cat yet. My curiosity is roused. I have a feeling there's something important to learn from this stranger. So I throw on my clothes and crawl out of my tent. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Anyone out here? My catalogue beeps again. Walk to the edge of the forest. I'm not going any further until you tell me who you are. Walk to the edge of the forest. No. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Stop it. Yay. By now I realise I've walked to the edge of the forest. At the edge of the forest I see something on the ground. As it gets closer, it becomes clear that it's a small posy of flowers. I gingerly pick them up and notice that several of the flower heads are missing. My catalogue beeps again. Follow the petals. And that's when I see a trail of little orange petals, the same colour as the bouquet I'm holding. Well, I've come this far. No turning back now. There is turning back now. I begin to walk. I'm nervous, so I call out. Hello? No answer. Louder this time. Hello? 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 Who's that? Who goes there? Major? Is that you, Fluffy Butt? I really wish you wouldn't call me that human. What on earth do you think you're playing at? Cavorting around the forest in the dead of night, causing a ruckus. Oh, Major. You don't know how pleased I am to see you. I need your help. And this can't wait until a civilized hour. I'm afraid he can't. I'm not the one instigating this. I've been getting messages from an anonymous source asking me to follow them into the forest. Look, they've left this trail. Ah, Calendula Maritina. Marigolds. Pearl of the sun. They're said to represent creativity. Though some believe them to be symbols of cruelty and grief. Your knowledge is always so impressive. But I have to say, on this occasion, it's not very comforting. Fluffy Buck goes striding off with purpose. Come along then, Barry. Are we going to follow this trail or not? I shuffle awkwardly behind him. Before the sun comes up, eh? We continue on for a short while. I notice that the pearls are getting more sparse, becoming more difficult to see them. Until eventually, they seem to run out, and we find ourselves in a small clearing. Well, it appears somebody has been playing a joke on you, Barry. I surely agree. This has been nothing but a wild goose chase. It seems so, Major. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Let's go back to our beds before we waste any more precious snooze time on this wall. I turn to Fluffy Butt and notice that his back is arched and his fur is puffed up, making him look even more floofy than usual. Something wrong, Major? You tell me, human. Does that pile of rocks look suspicious to you? Amongst myriad rock piles, I notice a small, contrived-looking car. If that's right, it looks far from natural. It looks to me like it's asking to be inspected, Major. Well, get to it, Barry. You're the one with thumbs. I begin to dismantle the small mound, rock by rock. It's not until the foundation stone is removed that we find a manila envelope. Major, look, it's a letter. Looks rather large for a letter, my dear. I think you ought to open it. Here, or back a base? Having got you this far, I think it's only fair that I have equal share of the spoils. Spoils? Yes, perhaps we should look right now, Major. As I'm speaking, I've torn into the envelope. Well, out with it! Um, it looks like drawings. What sort of drawings? Not sure. They look quite old. Antique, even. Do they have value, human? Probably, to someone. They appear to be sketches of people here on the island. I don't recognise anyone. How would someone lead me to these? How do you know you were meant to find them? Because we followed the trail and it led us here? Actually, the trail ended a while back. This could have been mere coincidence. I hardly see the intrigue in a few old scribbles. They show no artistic flair at all. Even so, I'm going to hang on to these to see if they prove relevant to whatever mystery is unfolding here on the island. Floofabut rolls his eyes. Really ought to focus more on the clues that matter, instead of running around in the middle of the night on a wild goose chase. 
Let's head back before anybody discovers you're missing. I roll the drawings up and tuck them into my waistband. I will study them when I have more time. I think Fluffy Butt is probably right. But I don't want to miss a trick. Get some rest now, Barry. Finally, a sensible suggestion. I headed out to Fluffy Boots, struggling to keep up. I really need some sleep. If you enjoyed this episode, then tickle the like button. Perhaps subscribe and check out the rest of the channel. And why not join us on the Facebook, Twitter, Discord and Patreon. Links are in the description and rolling for the credits right now. I've been Landis. This has been Perfect Takes. Thank you very much and see you soon.